Chris Drea, how's it going uh, with the Artbirds these days? It's going well, very well. Um, I'm amazed that um, we're still playing and have a you know, truly wonderful audience and also a lot of new recruits to the existing baby boomer audience that we had, obviously. We've just come back from Japan and uh, by four days missed their terrible tsunami. So uh, and they were a wonderful audience. So we're doing a lot of traveling and playing and uh, taking the music uh, as far as we can. How's touring these days? Well, um, it's never a wonderful, you know, obviously traveling is not the most wonderful thing in the world anymore. Uh, not that it ever was. Uh, the facilities are a lot better than the 60s. You know, the sound facilities and the uh, PAs and stage crew and everything else is much more professional. Um, but um, in some ways, uh, you know, flying here and then everywhere is is sort of... <laughs> more fraught than it was well obviously uh you don't want to fly to australia you don't want to take the bus to australia well no so flying is obviously helpful you know um but i mean we used to fly a lot in the 60s and uh of course it was quite more it's quite glamorous in those days and uh, nowadays it's just sort of sort of cattle meat really isn't it uh you're going to play the zep fest um in end of may that's right yeah Looking forward to that. That sounds an amazing event. Led Zeppelin, you know, has uh, been really close, you know, to the Yardbirds for the years. How does it feel, you know, to be part of this big music industry, you know, the way it ended up and you being one of the founders of this, you know, genre? Well, that's an extraordinary story because, of course, at the time you don't realize what the history will be. Um, and I think that uh, even like the Beatles, we thought that we'd just be a memory after a sort of a People forgot we forgot what we did after a few weeks when we stopped doing it. But uh, history has, has proved otherwise, and uh, it's a, it's a great honor to be part of that, uh, you know, sort of groundbreaking, uh, break the rules, part of uh, you know musical history that's, that's sustained to this very day. You know. Do you presume making a new album in the future? We are recording at Lebset. <laughs> Lebset. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a gin and tonic. Um, uh, we actually are recording at Zepfest every night, so we might either be doing a DVD or some more live recording from that show. We're going to do some other material. Um, we have three shows to do at uh, Zepfest, so um, uh, that could be quite interesting. Any uh, new songs being uh, written? No, not brand new songs. New arrangements. Okay. But no uh, new songs arranged for the future? Uh, I, sh I think there's one or two in the pipeline. They're not going to be ready for the Zepfest show. Now, the band members um, that you have in this lineup, where do they all come from, let's say? How, how did they end up in this uh, big outfit? Well, they're all British, so they're all from the UK. And they came about because, uh, well, as you know, the Yardbirds uh, have been known for guitarist band for many years you know for sure and we've had many guitar players through the band over the years and uh jippy mayo who was with dr feelgood uh and seven years with us when we reformed he decided to come off the road so we needed to find some very special talent and we were auditioning and uh you know some very great players but this young man came along and he knocked the socks off everybody ben king i'm talking about and he was 21 when he joined us, he's been with us now for five or so years. Truly gifted player, wonderful player. And then um, John Iden decided to come off the road and promote his own material. He used to be the singer uh, um, until two years ago. And uh, again, auditions. But we decided, Jim and I, between us, that uh, you know we, we were hearing a lot more interest, a lot more interesting young young players and musicians than than the sort of older you know, genre. So we decided to swing, you know, if we were going to make this, make these changes, we'd go for some young musicians. Obviously the ones that they had to be very right in their roots of their music and everything else. Um, so we recruited Andy Mitchell. He's a, he's a very good singer. Uh, so the Yardbirds now have a front man, which we didn't with John because he played bass and sang as well. Mm -hmm. And also we have a, well, like a young Paul Jones, if I may say, uh, very, very brilliant young bass player who's a great musician. And uh, so those three guys, um, Dave Smale is the bass player. 
they brought a tremendous new energy into the band, which is always energetic anyway. So, uh, and it's enabled us to do several different things because Andy's is a great acoustic guitar player, and uh, so we've been able to do a few sort of different sort of soundscape things within the band. Do you recall, let's say, in the old days, when you know Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page in the studio, like innovations being created, you know, certain I things. Do. Well, we were innovating all the time because. You know, um, we grew up in the uh, in the very static uh, recording confines of the sort of BBC output, which you know, you know, you, you weren't allowed to do certain things, send needles into the red or whatever. And then all of a sudden, we came along and uh, you know decided to play around with feedback and various fuzz sounds and any sound that actually kind of attracted attracted us. So there, there were so many ideas flying around. So I saw a lot of innovations in the studio. Probably the most innovations I saw were in the making of uh, the album, the Yardbirds album, Over, Sun, Over Under Sideways Down. Uh, the material is very eclectic. It, it ranges from sort of things with pianos and wobble boards and sort of African chants to Indian influences. Very interesting. Um, it was a great album. To, we, we wrote and recorded it and did all the stuff within, a, within two weeks, actually, which you know, it was quite quite, quite remarkable time. Um, very fresh stuff. Very different to what was going on out there at the time, you know. It had all sorts of songs that uh, were... Well, Over Under Sideways Down, of course, was the, uh, the main song. But there was lots of material within the album that was very groundbreaking at the time. Nobody had really played around quite like that, you know. I've heard the Birdland album. Now, these songs, is it in the new vision that you uh, make them? They, they sound really fresh also. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, we Yeah, I mean, we hadn't done a new album for 35 years, a studio album. So when Jim and I you know, took the band back on the road and it became quite serious, we felt we needed to do another studio album. So we did Birdland and we wrote half the material is new material. And we, we kind of revisited some of our more classic stuff so that it would appear for hopefully for a new audience and it was mm -hmm. different sonically but uh, it obviously was a you know kind of you know if we got it wrong it would have been bad news because if you didn't keep that energy in there it would have uh, not been good for us but luckily i think that uh, you know everybody seems to have received the album very well it seems with the album it um, it does capture the the classic sound as well as the new sound how how yes. you went uh, around to do that well, we all played analog, of course, okay. you know, and all the all the instrumentation were uh, classic ins instruments, um, and it was done in Steve Vai's studio, most of it, but uh, most of it was done analog, you know, and painstakingly put together um, whatever, or you know, or we tried to play tracks all the way through without stitching, you know, so to create to keep that excitement, but also to keep that warm that sound that sound that was. Uh, so it doesn't sound too sort of uh, modern in many ways, you know. More gigs coming up soon, like after the Zep Fest on the website. There's nothing marked really yet. <clears throat> after Zep Fest, we're doing some UK shows. Okay. In the West Country and in London, uh, we then do another American tour back later in September. We're also playing places like Tel Aviv later in the year. Um, so who knows? <laughs> it's it's still a magical mystery tour. Uh, Chris, and most of the gigs, are they all filmed? No. no. Well, I mean, these days everything's filmed because you can't move 10 feet without somebody filming and putting on YouTube with a mobile phone camera. For sure. If you know what I mean. So a lot of, <laughs> a lot of performances are filmed by the audience, yes. But we don't, uh, we don't do too much professional filming ourselves. We can have uh, a Czech crew come in from Czechoslovakia to film one of the shows, I think, coming up in, in England. And as I say, we'll be doing a bit of filming and recording at the Zepfest. You've been a part of the Yardbirds for you know since the beginning and played along with Eric Clapton, Jeff Becker, Jim Page. <laughs> I just must try be a to good... make them sound good. <laughs> it must be a good feeling when you wake up in the morning. Well, I have no regrets. I must put it that way to you. you no, know, I'm I'm very proud and you know honoured that uh, you know I, I I you know naturally mix company with some really great people. You know and. Uh, as you know, the history has kind of proved that, so what can I say? <laughs> In some sense, could you say that you've helped their career, considering they started uh, with you? 
Well, I think the Yardbirds have helped all their careers, of course, you know, um, because it launched Jeff, of course, you know, as a, as a remarkable, the material that we wrote and he played on proved to the world what an extraordinary gifted guitar player he was. With Jimmy Page, of course, we were the forerunner of Led Zeppelin and uh, were routining, you know, songs like Dazed and Confused and all sorts of things that he then took into Led Zeppelin. So, yes, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, you have to, you know, say that your history is, if it was a good one, is a part of what uh, made, made you today, you know. Throughout the years, have you kept in contact with uh, all three of them? Pretty much, yes. Yes, now and again, yes, indeed. And that means when they come to town, you get uh, tickets to go and see them play? Well, when Zeppelin reformed and played at the O2, I, uh, I didn't fancy going to that show, to be honest. I'm not a great believer in a huge auditorium like that. But Jimmy actually came to one of our theater shows a year or so back when we were playing with the Zombies. And so did Jeff, actually. So uh, we do see them, and uh, they do grace our shows occasionally, you know. Your history is uh, very, very, very important, I think, and it uh, should Thank be you. promoted way more Thank than it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That's very kind of you. Well, Chris, I look forward to talking to you in the, in the future again. And, All right, uh, yes, definitely. Take care, man. Okay, and I'll look forward to the getting that album you've recommended of the Yardbirds. Yes, Roger the Engineer. It's the most one of the most interesting Yardbird albums, definitely. Okay, well I'll be getting that. Good man. <laughs> All right, you Enjoy have a good, it. you have a good evening. Thank you, and you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye bye.